Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I trust you are feeling bright and blessed this morning, in love with Jesus and full of the Holy Spirit. Now, we are going to be continuing our look into the life of Job through the book of Job, and today we are in Job chapter 19. Now, Job is responding to what Bildad has just said, and of course, a compilation of what has been said by all three of these friends, Bildad, Zophar, and Eliphaz. And Job begins by saying, in verse 2, how long will you vex my soul? In other words, how long will you trouble me and break me in pieces with words? Now, you know, I find it interesting that we begin being lied to at a very early age. You might remember the childhood saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true, friends. Words do hurt us. I'm sure that if you can stop and think right now, you will remember words that you have said that have hurt others. You will also remember things that others have said to you that have hurt you. And so we must be very careful in what we say, especially in moments of high emotion, because our words can hurt others for years to come. You see, oftentimes in heated arguments, people say things through pain and hurt, and these things come back to hurt us and cause great damage over time. And it is in such time as these that people will often say, when they are apologizing, I really didn't mean that. But Jesus told us in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19, we are told that it is harder to win back a brother who has been offended by our words than to take a city in battle. And so we can learn a very important lesson here that words do cause damage. And that's what Job is saying. He's saying, look, how long will you trouble me with your words? How long will you cause pain to my soul by what you say? He says in verse 22, it is enough that God has persecuted me, but why do you persecute me as God has persecuted me? If we back up to verse 13, Job reminds us that not only is he being persecuted and tormented through the pain and suffering of his body, not only is he being tormented and persecuted by his friends who are saying such things unto him, but he says that he has been separated from his brothers that his friends have become his strangers. In verse 14, he says, my kinsfolks have failed me and my familiar friends have forgotten me. They that dwell in my house and my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant unto me, but he did not recognize me. He treated me as a dog, in other words. He says in verse 17, my breath is strange to my wife. In verse 18, young children despise me. They mock me. You know how cruel kids can be. Job gets out of bed in the morning in his time of suffering, goes outside and sits, and the young children make sport of him. He says in verse 19, all my inward friends, my best friends, they abhor me and despise me. Those whom I love and showed compassion to and concern for, they are turned against me. So recognizing the fact that everything that I love and care for has rejected me and I am suffering from all sides, he says in verse 21, have pity upon me, you who call yourselves my friends. He says in verse 23, I wish that my words were now written, were printed in a book. And little did he know that they would be. But then as Job so often does, he turns his attention from his pain and suffering. And look at what he says in verse 25. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he will stand at the latter day upon the earth. Now Job is making prophecy here of the Lord Jesus Christ returning to earth and reigning in Jerusalem as King of kings and Lord of lords. 
He says in verse 27, I will see him for myself and mine eyes shall behold. Friends, what a great hope that is in all the pain, in all the suffering, in all the injustice that is taking place upon the earth. Jesus is coming back to set things right. And if we have been born again, if we have been washed in the blood, if we have been filled with his spirit, we will stand with him in that great day. And that should cause us to want to sing hallelujahs to the great God that we serve. He says, I will be present that day. I will see him for myself. My eyes will behold him. And he ends in verse 29 by saying, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid for you, friends. I'm afraid that you don't know him. You should be afraid of the sword of judgment for his wrath will bring the punishments of that sword. And if you're not very careful, you will know his judgment. And what a lesson we can learn from Job, friends. He's being attacked in the flesh. He's being attacked in his spirit by his friends despising him, his family rejecting him. He's being attacked in his mind by trying to center his attention upon his suffering. And yet he holds on to the only hope that he has. I know that my Redeemer liveth and he will stand at the latter day upon the earth. It's not about me, Job is saying. It's all about him. Everything is about him. All of our attention, all of our adoration is to be upon him. Because truly he is King of kings and Lord of lords. Let every knee bow. Let every tongue confess that Jesus of Nazareth is Lord of all. Hallelujah, friends. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so glad again that you are here with us this morning. I pray that you are walking in the spirit of the living Christ and that you are being conformed each and every moment into the person and nature of he whom you serve. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.